In this demonstration, we are now going to cover creating a storage account via the Azure portal. So let's flip straight over to Azure. Here we are in Azure, and the first thing we're going to do is on the left, just go ahead and create a new resource group. So select resource groups. Select add at the top. And type in your resource group name. So in my case, I'm going to use sl-storage. Choose your subscription and the resource group location. Again, this is just for metadata for the resource group itself. You can still put your storage account in any region you like. And go ahead and create that. The reason we do this and create our own resource group here is we can put all our storage accounts in there for demonstration purposes. Just delete the resource group when you're done and you've ultimately wiped everything out straight away. So within a few seconds, that should be created if we hit refresh here. And there we go, sl-storage. Now we're going to that resource group. And let's go in here and create a new storage account. So go ahead and select add. Type in storage account. You'll see it'll come up there, storage account, blob, file, table, queue, because that's what we can store in there. And go ahead and select that. Create. And now we'll get the blade for creating our storage account. So first of all, let's go ahead and give it a name. So in my case, I'm going to use SL Storage Demo. And as you can see, this is a publicly addressable namespace that we need here, so it has to be unique. Then we choose the deployment model. For everything in this course, we'll ultimately be using the resource manager model, as you've probably seen so far. And then we get onto the storage account type. So if we go ahead and hit the drop down here, we can see we have storage, storage v2, and blob storage. And ultimately, now everything we do, we're going to use a storage v2 account. Now you notice some of the options change below. If we go back and choose storage g v1, we don't get that option for the tier straight away. I'm going to switch back to it again. And you can see that there we get a default access tier. And this is because we can set a tier of storage at the storage account level, which will apply to all the objects underneath it. Now we can still change the individual blobs to have their own access tier, but this is quite a nice feature because we can say, okay, everything we want here, we might want cool, we might want hot. In my case, I'm going to choose hot and everything underneath it will apply to. Then we can choose our performance. So we've got standard and premium, much like when we talked about virtual machine disks. You know, we can choose SSD type storage or standard spinning disk. In our case, yeah, we'll just go for standard for the purposes of this demo. Next, we need to look at replication options, and we have the same four that we covered in the virtual machine section. LRS, which is locally redundant storage. This is three copies locally in the same data center. We have ZRS, which is zone redundant storage. This is in preview currently. Still three copies, but in a zone-based region, so a couple of data centers in the same region. Geo-redundant storage, which is GRS. This is six copies across multiple regions. And finally, RA-GRS, which is read access geo-redundant storage that allows us to replicate to another region and actually read data there. It's basically warm and ready for us to access. In our case here, we'll simply select LRS. Next, we choose our access tier, as we already discussed. We're going to use the hot tier. And then we have options around secure transfer. If we open up the information on this one, this allows us to enforce encryption options for when we access in data from the storage account. For the purposes of this demo, we'll just choose disabled, choose your subscription, and select the resource group we just created previously. Finally, scroll down, select your location. In my case, I'm going to continue to use North Central US, and choose disabled for virtual networks. This option, which will be covered in the networking section, is around virtual service endpoints. And that allows us to say, take a storage account, and instead of exposing it over the internet, we can expose it directly through a virtual network. And this is a way for security teams to buy off on the fact that you know we have blob storage out there that's only inside of the Azure private network itself. With all those options selected, go ahead and click Create. And then we'll fast forward here. It should take about a minute for your account to be created. And we'll transition to once that's completed. As you can see, after a period of time, the storage account is now created, and we can go ahead and select it. Once it opens up, you can see the performance that we chose, which is standard, the replication set to LRS, and our account, which is set to GPV2. And then at the bottom, you can see our various services. So we've got blobs, files, tables, queues. If we wanted to go ahead and upload blobs, we could go into the blob section, create our container, and upload it from here. But you'll see in a subsequent demo as we use Storage Explorer how you can upload 
lots of blob images and manage your storage account from there. And with that, this concludes this demonstration.